You've probably heard a ton about attachment styles at this point, right? You may have labeled your ex as avoidant and yourself as anxious, and that's totally fine. It can help us make sense of the underlying dynamics going on in the relationship. But I see a lot of people getting stuck in attachment theory and kind of using it as the be all end all of dating and relationships. So today I'm going to be talking about why focusing so much on attachment styles can actually be a blind spot to finding real love. And I'm gonna be talking about what you can do instead. Before we get into it, if this is your first time here, welcome. My name is Lindsay and I am the Real Love Alchemist. I help you go from bad relationships to real love with the magic of subconscious work. Are you curious about what this magic is? Check out the link in the description. I first learned about attachment theory almost a decade ago. And when I was first reading about it, it made complete sense to me. I put myself in the anxious category and I put my husband at the time in the avoidant category. And then when I was dating after my divorce, I had this mindset of, okay, I'm anxious. I need to find a secure person. I need to avoid the avoidance and look for the secure people. But I started to see some holes in attachment theory when I started dating my current partner and now I'm in a healthy relationship. I noticed in this relationship that I actually didn't feel anxiously attached anymore. Like maybe I still did lean a little bit anxious at times, but I was generally pretty calm. I felt secure, which really made me question attachment theory. And then as I started seeing some holes in this attachment theory, I started to notice some of my own avoidant tendencies coming up. I was resistant to intimacy at times, which made me kind of say, well, am I anxious? Am I avoidant or am I both? I eventually figured out that technically I would be labeled a fearful avoidant or a disorganized attachment system. But at that point, I was really coming out of the black and white thinking that attachment theory asks us to view relationships through. I was seeing a lot more nuance. And what I realized is a lot of us label ourselves as anxiously attached when we're actually in toxic relationships with unavailable partners. Because what I was experiencing, being in a healthy relationship, I wasn't anxious at all. And I compared it to back when I was in these toxic relationships with unavailable partners, and I was super anxious. And I realized the problem was actually not my attachment style at all. The relationships I was in were making me anxious. And I realized that anyone who was in those relationships would feel the same way. And here's what really changed my perspective. There was a while when I was still in contact with my ex-husband who was unavailable, and I watched him go from super avoidant in our relationship to very anxiously attached with a partner who was emotionally unavailable to him. And so this was when I really started to move away from attachment theory, because I was seeing that most of us have anxious and avoidant tendencies within us. It just depends on who we're with. Sure, we can lean one way or the other. We can lean more anxious or more avoidant, but I wasn't finding putting people into these categories all that helpful when it came to finding real love, a healthy relationship. It was causing me to miss out on a lot of nuance. And if I hadn't started to come out of that attachment theory thinking, I probably would have missed out on a really good relationship because my partner can lean more avoidant at times. And if I was only looking through the attachment theory lens, I would have missed out on this really great relationship where I do feel safe and secure, vice versa. He could have seen some of my avoidant tendencies and fled too, but he's here and he's happy. So I really dropped attachment theory for all intents and purposes and really just use it as a way to categorize certain behaviors within a relationship. Because like I saw within myself, I was working with so many clients who were also labeling themselves as anxiously attached when their attachment system was not the problem. They were in a really toxic relationship. They were with someone who was narcissistic or really emotionally unavailable, and that was the issue. And the reason why I'm making this video today is because when we are overly focused on healing our own attachment system, we can actually miss a lot. The tendency if we label ourselves as anxious is we need to fix ourselves, we need to heal. 
So you stay in this bad relationship and you try to heal your way towards feeling good about it. When really what you need to do is leave that relationship. So I don't teach attachment theory in my courses and my programs, and I don't recommend you get too focused on that either. In the work that I do with my clients, I don't see it helping them as far as getting them into a healthy relationship. Here's what I teach instead. Healthy relationship behaviors. Another word for this, green flags. Behaviors and characteristics to look for in a partner so that you can find real love. This cuts out all the attachment stuff and gets right to the heart of what's most important to have a healthy relationship. My clients get a long list of these behaviors when they work with me, but I'll give you an example of a couple of them here. So instead of looking for someone who's secure and trying to avoid the anxious and avoidant people, look for someone who understands that physical intimacy and emotional intimacy go hand in hand when you're dating, meaning they're not pushing for sex on the first date. They understand that that happens when you connect emotionally and you feel safe with someone. Here's another healthy relationship behavior to look for. They know how to apologize and forgive, meaning they can own when they've done something hurtful and they can give a genuine apology. And then they can not do that thing again and do something different. They're also able to forgive because we're not perfect either. We're gonna make mistakes, we're gonna say things that maybe were hurtful. We want a person who will be able to forgive us and accept our genuine apology. Another green flag to look for, they're able to compromise. All good relationships require compromise, which people like narcissists haven't gotten the memo on. You want your partner to be able to give and take with you so that you can both be happy in the relationship. So those are some examples of healthy relationship behaviors that you can use to look for in a partner instead of focusing on attachment styles. I don't want you getting deeper into a toxic relationship when what you really need to do is leave. If you liked hearing about how I dated years ago, check out this video here. It's the advice that I would have given myself as a coach when I was younger.